Today, we're going to check out a very, very cool tool that allows you to go from this instantly to this. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my tutorial on prototyping, but you could watch this full course on prototyping at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description in YouTube, then and you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of course, Cetro.com. So today I'm really excited to share with you this beta version. I just got the invite. So this is something I don't think that you can currently, you know, gain access to right now in this point in time, but I wanted to really uh, show how really cool this tool is because it's very unique and it's called Uzerd or Uizerd, U-I-Z-A-R-D.io. So let me show you, this is the uh, the home page you can check out as well. And it'll give you a quick rundown of what exactly it is. But it basically it transforms your hand-drawn wireframes to sketch files, but also uh, you can export them as HTML and CSS as well. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how I, I'm gonna use this tool basically for the first time. I just got the email this morning actually. Um, and I'm going to get the camera out. You're gonna see me draw some of these, uh, these prototyping app screens, and then I'll take a picture of it and you'll see how it automatically transforms it into something that looks much more presentable, say perhaps to a client. Um, what's really cool about this tool as well is I, there's a cheat sheet and this lets you know all how to draw certain things and certain components like, uh, let's see, like for instance, images. It shows, it'll show you exactly what you should draw and what the uh, based on the input, and it'll show you what the output will look like. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do. There's uh, icons, as you can see. These are all the different icons you can just quickly draw, and it will output these really clean versions of the icon. So there's uh, also a prototyping section uh, where you can actually, if I click on this real quickly, let it load, this we will allow you to prototype much like Adobe XD uh, or Figma, for instance, where you can uh, create, you know, your app screen and then show the other details. And yeah, so I'm really impressed with this. Definitely check it out and let's get started. All right. So basically, I'm going to do two app screen de uh, designs on this. Uh, basically, this is just white printer paper. Um, and just to, I need to preface this by saying I have a tripod between my legs. Um, not for the reasons you think, but, um, it's very difficult to, to, to draw, especially when I'm kind of seated far away. There's also a microphone in front of my face. I, this is going to look really crude. So this will be a true testament to, to the product to see if it can accurately, um, take what will be probably ugly design that I do in terms of, you know, just um, handwriting based or hand drawing based uh, prototypes and translate it into something that, um, you know, accurately represents what I want, essentially. So let's go ahead. Um, we'll just say we'll do like search like a, a CMS like content uh, management system, like search results for users or something, uh, where there's a search and then it'll list the users out. And then if you click on it, uh, it'll show like the user details or like uh, input fields where you, where, you can, where you can adjust user information perhaps. All right, so the first thing you wanna do and they recommend is you, uh, you wanna encase your design in a rectangle um, to simulate the, like the phone essentially. So uh, let's do that. I'm gonna make these you know, pretty big because I'm far away and I want to give myself the ability to easily draw and design what I need to. Okay, so uh, we'll say we'll have like a, I don't know, like a logo up here, in which case I'll just make an image, a circular image, kind of like an avatar. And the way you make an image is you can do like a, a rectangle or a circle with an X through it. Ta-da. Now you can also do a bunch of different icons. So I want a menu icon, which would simply look like this. Just three horizontal lines. And we'll put a separator here, just like that. And this will give us kind of like a soft white drop shadow, kind of like Google material style. Um, we'll also have maybe like a search bar. So we'll have a text field, 
which you can do just by doing a or drawing a um, a text field essentially just like that that's all and then a button to the right of it you can also put another button be beneath it that's like full width but I'm choosing just to go to the right in two columns and then you could put like a squiggly line to have like lorem text placed inside of it so then we could have like the search results maybe like the amount of results right here and this is just a label um, and let's separate this out and then we'll put in the search results here so the search results might have like a user avatar okay with a name like their username or the real name whatever and then we'll do an icon here like to simulate okay click on it and go to the information so we can do like a right arrow icon there so let's separate that out we'll do that two more times all right and I'm happy with that okay looks very crude right so now let's uh, do one that simulates uh, what will happen when a user or somebody clicks on one of those results wow look at that nice straight line uh, we'll have like a, a username or the person's name here with a larger version of their image again it's just a big X okay uh, we'll separate this out and then maybe some labels with text fields label text field oh, this is hard and then we'll have a button at the bottom and you can actually have a label inside of a button just the same as before like that boy is that ugly now let's see if it'll actually work all right so I'm in the app and it's actually not an app it's just a web-based you know you go to your browser you, you go you log in and that's it you don't have to download an actual app um, and you can see we can create a prototype here before we actually take the pictures of what we drew um, and I'll just call this uh, DC for design course you can choose your device so we're obviously going for a mobile um, desktop is coming soon style guide so this will be like based on how it translates and like what colors it uses I tried to create a dark UI you can create your own style guide but I couldn't get that one to work um, in terms of making like a dark UI but you can create you know you can change the primary colors and all that so these are just some of the simple mock-up cozy and adventurous that ships with the app I'm just going to choose adventurous um, right here and then hit create so at that point, you can see it says drag and drop your hand-drawn mobile wireframes or click here to upload. So we're on mobile, so we'll just tap here and we choose the camera. And then now we could take a picture of our first screen. Get it in there. And you don't want any outside interference. You don't want anything else. You know, you just want the white paper and that's it. Hit OK. And it's going to process this. And so you can see it's uploading. Now it says processing. It literally only takes maybe like 10 seconds. So I'm not even going to bother fast forwarding, fast forwarding, if I could talk fast forwarding this, um, cause I've gone through it a couple times already. And there we go. Uh, let's check this out. Uh, we'll look at it on the desktop as well. Um, so as you could see, I, it's not hundred percent perfect, but it just about is. We can see the button says Lorem, but, but there's no white space on the right and left. I think I probably should have made that bigger in the prototype um, or the actual hand drawing um, but outside of that we have this label here like we wanted to of course we have oh I just noticed that the the logo is kind of outside of this part I'm not sure why because this was pretty accurate I thought I uh, for the the icon that was supposed to be on the same line as the hamburger menu but that's okay um, and yeah so as you can see we can see the input this is our input right here and this is the result and this is strange that this happened because that didn't happen on any other other results let's try this one though as well there I was almost getting that other design there I if you're drawing this you don't have a tripod in front of your face um, which will hinder your, your ability to create good artwork here um, so that would definitely uh, probably not result in that issue up there there this one you can see now 
it has it where it should be right there. We have the label, we have the person's uh, avatar of sorts. We have a label for the text in the input field, text input field, and then our button down there. And this one worked flawlessly, awesome. All right, so here is our uh, prototype. So you first list out all your prototypes. This is just the example one that starts off with. Um, we're gonna choose the one, the DC one we created with our two wireframes inside of it. Um, and you can also do this whole process on, on the desktop as well, apparently. So um, very versatile at least. And we can see the first one we did, which we can see unfortunately this issue occurred uh, where it's not up there. I didn't think I, drew a rectangle it looked like a pretty solid circle to me <laughs> although you know it's still in beta so i'm, I'm not too uh disappointed there uh, but here's the one that basically did everything perfect as you can see it translated it quite well we have our um, avatar image up here with the hamburger menu we have our little divider we have our text right here for the label um the picture the other label the input field, other label, input field, and then the button down here, which worked quite well. Um, so you can see how just shaky my drawing was um, because of my angle <laughs> far away from the, uh, the paper. Um, so what's cool is we have these tabs up here um, and we have prototype. Let's, let's first go to edit though. And you can see, you can start actually hovering over these different elements. Um, and when you hover over them and you select it, for instance, right here, um, you can change the style guide, by the way, select cozy, it'll change everything up. That's a part of this prototype. Um, what's simple mock-up. So this is pretty much no color at all. So we'll go back to adventurous. Um, and then you can actually replace elements based on your current selection. They have suggestions based on what you drew. Um, we could change it to a, a, a radio icon, a button, whatever. Uh, but you can change it to other things as well. Like, okay, it should be that right there. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like that. I can actually position this differently, like inside of here. I can't move it because it moves the whole artboard just by left clicking. Um, so if you can, if you're the developers of this, let's let us know um, in the comments here on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, that's how you can modify things in a pretty simplistic manner. Uh, like if you meant to draw something else and uh, this should be like a down instead of a right, you can easily change it that way. Um, so now let's go to prototype. Uh, and you can see it's similar to a lot of the other prototyping tools out there in terms of appearance so far. Like you have your home artboard, like in Adobe XD or whatever. Um, and if we want somebody to uh, be able to click on this, I uh, we can drag it to this screen just like that. It's very simple. There's not like a ton of like um, tools like you'd see in Adobe XD or options for these transitions, but nonetheless, it still works. Um, so let's just make this perhaps go back here. All right, and I, I haven't even done this yet. So I'm assuming this is all we would have to do. Now we could click play and somebody clicks on this one, takes them there, this one takes them back very very easy very cool that's the first time i actually used it so um it worked exactly as expected i uh, and that's basically it so what you would do it's a it's a process of i uh, you know if you're, you're really a, you're a person that likes to draw your prototypes very quickly uh then you draw all your app screens just like we did um you make your adjustments to them um and you do much more and by the way I wanna go back to prototypes and uh, you could click on style guides over here and you can create your own style guide as well, which is really cool. So DC, we'll call it. Um, you can see we have, um, you can choose like the default uh, style guide representation, like the color when you're picking your style guides up here. Uh, your primary black, gray, and white, it lets you choose your uh, the font family associated with it, which is really cool. So, you know, for me, I might type in Montserrat, of course, um, and it lets you adjust, you know, the text color, font weight, all that stuff um, for your, like your headers and your paragraphs, your button colors, text colors and images. You could change the border radius, shadow. You could change a lot of stuff. So it's just very cool. Very, uh, I, I didn't know they had this feature when I first checked it out. I was like, man, that would be cool if they had that. And fortunately they do. It would be cool if they allowed you to specify like the background color um, and all that. But then again, it is just a prototype. Uh, it's not like meant to be a full finished product anyhow. So very cool. All right. So hopefully you found that really cool. I know I did definitely check them out. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.